privatization of social security may be happening as all of the options are running out as we're getting closer to the trust fund running completely dry and big benefit cuts across the board. But is this a good idea? I'm going to give you the pros and cons of privatization of social security. We're going to hear from Senator Fetterman to implement a, a program to privatize social security. And I was like, wow, that's kind of that's kind of crazy. I always thought that uh, Social Security was very sacred and I turned out to be the only uh... I'll play the full video clip of what he has to say. We'll go over this article. Congress stole from Social Security and should return the money it's taken with interest. Fact or fiction? And I'll give you some other important updates as well. Before I dive into the main content, if you appreciate these Social Security updates, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more Social Security updates. So privatization of Social Security, it's a hot topic and almost no one wants to talk about Social Security and privatization. So what does privatized Social Security mean and would it benefit you? Those are the big questions here. Uh, so we're going to get into exactly what this is. What does private uh, privatization of Social Security mean? We're going to go over how could privatization p potentially help? as well as what are the potential drawbacks to privatization of Social Security. So before we get into that, take a look at what Senator Fetterman has to say about the privatization of Social Security. Senator Fetterman. Governor, good to see you again. And I just want to acknowledge you, you enjoyed a very strong bipartisan vote to, to bring you on, correct? Thank you, I yeah. did. And uh, that's a testament to, to your career and how serious you take this job. Thank you. And 25 years ago, I was a graduate student um, at the Kennedy School, and we were tasked with uh, what's a policy analysis exercise. And they, were, they charged us to now um, to evaluate and to implement a, a program to privatize Social Security. And I was like, wow, that's kind of that's kind of crazy. I always thought that uh, Social Security was very sacred. And I turned out to be the only uh, student there to I wrote things that I refused to entertain this uh, to put this in. And I argued that we just have to keep this uh, in that kind of position. And they actually gave me a failing uh, mark. And the one of the notes that I remember, it was uh, Gene uh, Sperling would fire you. You deserve to be. <laughs> And one of the things we also talked about is that, that Social Security is then the stability of that. And I believe that it is actually very stable as well, too. And uh, people, and it also was clear that some kind of actuarial kinds of adjustments or other kind of minor changes could really extend liquidity for decades. Is that, is that accurate? Uh, yes, sir, it is. I mean, the, it's a, it has been a remarkably simple program in one sense. I don't mean under So, I mean, this is like this whole kind of, you know, uh, the sky is falling that it's bankrupt or any kinds of thing like that. It's not incredibly going, stable. Not going bankrupt. At worst, if Congress were unable to act as you had in 1982, there would be a big Ex depletion exactly. event. But exactly. it's not going bankrupt. As long as Americans work, it will, ne it will not go bankrupt. Yeah. And I agree. So it would just mean... You know, it, it's it's so critical to to millions and millions of Americans, and it just would be just some small kind of adjustments like that, and then that would tack decades and decades of stability and financial security on that. Yes, as uh, as does a better performing economy and, and and more job creation and rising wages. Yeah, and and that's where we're at, and and I find it's 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 strange. It almost makes me giggle that. Uh, you know, we had members of, of the other side were more concerned about uh, time calls, uh, uh, but not now that the, their nominee is now discussing about cutting Social Security and things. Now, you wouldn't think that that would be advisable to want to cut that or to explore that kind of a conversation. I, I wouldn't think so. I, I haven't, in my, in my travels through these halls, I haven't met one member that wanted to cut Social Security, and I've met members of both parties that were surprised that we already have cut in terms of customer service, but I think that was unwitting. I haven't talked to a single member that said they believe we should cut Social Security. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I'm just like you all across Pennsylvania. I've never run into a senior or a recipient saying, you know what, we're getting too much and we really need to think about, you know, we could cut back and, and tighten our belt. And, and I just want to acknowledge as well, too, that uh, I would hope that in a bipartisan level that we want to protect that and strengthen it and address it and not turn it into a political football and just address it in ways and making those kinds of relatively minor kinds of changes uh, to allow uh, Social Security to be secured um, and fully f funded for decades and decades down. And even my, uh, one of my professor, Alan Simpson, my Repub a Republican from Wyoming, you know, mentioned the same thing, that it's going to be, it's often difficult to address that because it's utilized more of as a political football. And is that a same statement too? Would you agree with that? I, I was smiling only because I remember Alan Simpson and, um, uh, and he always makes me smile. Um, the, it can, Love that guy. The challenges, the challenges that face Social Security in terms of uh, uh, longer term solvency are, are things that this Congress certainly has the ability to address. And um, the, the good news is that this program has the support of 80% of the American people even in a time of pretty polarized politics. So that's an enormous consensus for, for extending it. Yeah, and I, you know, if 80% of Americans support that, I'm willing to bet that it's 99.999% of people that are recipients that support this, this program as well too. And, and millions to depend on that. So, and again, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Senator. What are your thoughts on what Senator Fetterman has to say about Social Security? Do you agree, disagree? Uh, take a quick look at this article right here. Fact or fiction, Congress stole from Social Security and should return the money it's taken with interest. What are your thoughts? Uh, should they do that? Is this true? Well, if we scroll down a bit, you could see that it is not true that Congress, I guess, literally did not steal from Social Security. It's fiction. While it's easy to blame lawmakers for Social Security's shortcomings, the idea that Congress pilfered funds from Social Security is 100% fiction. Now, they didn't literally steal, but the act of not doing anything for Social Security, in essence, is not giving more Social Security benefits, reform, expansion to its recipients. So I could, I could see the argument there that Congress did steal from Social Security, not literally, but by not giving more benefits, not changing uh, decades old uh, laws and requirements and, and payouts. A lot of that hasn't been changed by Congress, which has the power to do that. So as a result, I would say Congress did steal from Social Security, not literally, but by inaction of taking, uh, of uh, expanding and reforming. Let's get back to the privatization here. So what does privatized Social Security mean and would it benefit you? So what does it mean for Social Security to be privatized if you're not familiar? So Social Security is a, a social insurance program managed by the U.S. government. Most Americans look to Social Security as a retirement income, although it does pay out other types of benefits. To fund the payouts, the government assesses payroll taxes on workers. Excess money is invested in the U.S. Treasury Secretary Securities in the, in the Social Security Trust Fund. Income from the trust fund and incoming payroll taxes from the workers are used to pay benefits to current recipients. Under privatization, workers would be allowed to invest some or all of the money they currently pay, tax, pay in taxes into private investment accounts, like an IRA. Workers could choose their own investments in their privatized social security account, buying and selling as they please. Workers could even contribute more to their account if they so desired. In other words, the U.S. government would no longer invest worker payroll taxes into Treasury securities to make payouts, at least in the case of total privatization. Workers would be responsible for their own investment management. So I'm really curious. What are your thoughts? Uh, the current system that we have now is not privatized. Uh, if it is privatized, then if you're on Social Security, you have more control. For example, if you have an investment account, you could put it in more risky investments when you're younger and then more safe investments when you're older. Uh, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm into the whole uh, personal finance space. I have a whole other channel, uh, Wise Sense, on that. So 
Uh, it, it sort of makes sense, the privatization, uh, but how could privatization potentially help? Proponents of privatization claim that American investors could potentially outperform the relatively meager return that the U.S. government is earning for them by investing solely in Treasury secretary, securities. Advocates further suggest that when left to their own devices, workers will likely contribute even more to their retirement savings accounts, making, a, making for larger nest eggs. Other suggest that workers will find more palatable when money is taken out of their paychecks in the form of retirement contributions instead of payroll taxes. So just to give an idea, I'm not sure of what the current return on investment is of your payroll taxes that you get in Social Security money, but let's just say it's around 8 to 10% if you were to invest in the S&P 500, which is you know a you know, big uh, group of stocks. Uh, it's giving 8 to 10% per year. It would be higher. But what are the potential drawbacks? Opponents of the move to privatization suggest that it will unfairly enrich wealthier workers at the expense of those with lower incomes. The way Social Security is currently set up, lower income workers can actually receive more in benefits than they contribute in taxes. This will likely change if privatization kicks in. Wealthier workers are also more likely to be in the position to contribute greater amounts to their privatized social security accounts, while lower income workers might use that money for other purposes. So if you are working a low income job and your the payroll taxes are going towards your social security later on in life, uh, it's going to be a lot lower if it's privatized because you're not going to get as big of a return of, let's just say, you know, <clears throat> over the course of a lifetime or 30 years, let's say you pay $100,000 in taxes at a low income job uh, over 30 years, you know, you, you're only going to get as a 10% uh, return, let's say, you know, it only goes up to like two or 300,000 <clears throat> payout, excuse me. But, <clears throat> excuse me. But if you have, if you're wealthier, and let's just say you pay a million dollars in payroll taxes over the course of your 30, 40 year career, you will have a higher payout with privatized social security. So you can see the argument there. It doesn't really benefit the, um, the uh, lower income people, but maybe there could be a hybrid, something like that. Um, anyways, what are your thoughts? Privatization, no privatization? Uh, let me know your thoughts on that. And that is all the news that I have for you today to hopefully brighten your day a bit. Here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hi guys, I'm gonna give you the five positive tips to make you start your day and make you be positive and grateful as much as you can. So first, stay happy, stay strong, and have good vibes, and do great to others when they do great to you. And also, you know this one, be nice, be nice to others when you be nice to them. Bye. If you wanna see the official increased payment amounts for Social Security recipients because of new rule changes from the SSA, you're gonna to wanna to click this video over here as the announcement says that there will be increased payment. So click that video now and I'll see you in that video. Take care, be safe. Thank you for watching.